August 26th. They now will be forecasting um, river flood warnings up and down the Bisco River on a two-day basis. It's just money and growth. And we have to have capacity. We want people to be aware of what the um, cubic, you know, um, water coming down. What what the uh, ten thousand in Charlemont means thirty thousand down here. Right. Uh, we have flooding over the store road at that point. Now they're so this is the gauge in Charlemont um, goes back. The history goes back to nineteen thirteen, and then the gauges of um, in West Deerfield at the confluence of the South River um, goes back to nineteen forty eight. So they will um, they have action stage. They have flood stage. They have moderate flood. The major flood, all those warnings now will be published and we can we'll put it on the website That's so right. people can follow it. But this means we'll have warnings and it won't be just Dennis Muir, the fire chief in Charlotte, and myself calling each other in the middle of the night, you know, having the fire Charlotte and fire department check all the river. I mean, they're still going to be checking the engage river, but by doing this, this is so fabulous. This yeah. is like a push right now. Carolyn, just turn and put the mic like when you turn your head, they can't hear you. Well, anyway, all your smaller communities now have the ability to do so. And this is that owl, little owl. Too much work. We're still working on audio, by the way. Yes. Things are back ordered as usual. Everything's a little back ordered right now, but we have an order placed and we will hear us better soon. Well, anyway, I will send the, all the um, information to Casey and Jen so that they can just double check all the stuff that um, was presented. Because it sounds like the in person, everyone wants the in person, the Zoom option, and it seems that Russ has followed some of these DOE things lately. It will be really great, but no one feels that you're going to go back to just in person meetings. Because we would like to be able to do that. I'm jumping. Look at how many people we have on. You know, we have what, 60? Right. Oh, yeah. It's really amazing. Okay, yeah. sorry. Okay. I think I've kept up enough time. Oops. You have the extra minute. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a notice of public hearing pursuant to agenda law 148, section 19C and 
the select board as local as vice consumer authority for the town of Unitary nearby will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, July 28, 2021 at 615 on the application of Treehouse Brewing Company Incorporated for a fire series pouring license for premises located at one community place, South Deerfield, Mass. 01372. That is includes 107,374 square feet, four engine rooms, three floors, 13 bedrooms, and has the inside seating capacity of 295 and an overall capacity of plus or minus 500. Meetings are held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in person attendance and remote participation for the purpose of the purpose in person attendance is applicable to host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Office, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, for the remote participation. The um, Zoom meeting and the phone numbers are all still the same if you want to go through that when we go over the meeting. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Jim, can I step forward? Good evening. Can, can you folks hear me? Yes, we sure can. Excellent. So I'm, I'm getting some feedback on, on my end, so I'll just try and ignore it. Um, so Jen, really quickly, should I be sharing my screen or can you share um, can you share the PowerPoint that I sent over? Yeah, I can share it. Okay, super. Thank you. I had to I had to convert it to a PDF, so I don't. I it looks fine, but okay. I'm, yeah, I'll send it over in, in PDF format from now on. Thank you. Super. All right, can folks still hear me? I just want to make sure. Can I get a thumbs up, Casey? Awesome. Okay. So uh, for the record. Mark Borenstein, I'm attorney at Badditch and Dewey in Worcester. I represent uh, Treehouse Brewing Company. Uh, before you this evening is, is Kim Galinsky uh, of Treehouse. Also on the call, or, or on the Zoom call, rather, this evening is uh, Damian Goodrow and Dean Rowan of, of Treehouse, um, two owners of Treehouse Brewing Company. Um, and, and before you this evening, uh, we have the Pharma Series pouring permit. And I, I don't also know if, if we're also going to be presenting the entertainment license this evening, Casey or Jen. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so, so I'll start off with the Farmer Series uh, pouring permit. Um, if we just go to the next slide here. Awesome. So, um, as as I'm sure the select board knows, uh, Trias Brewing Company is the holder of a Section 19C Farmer Brewery license. Uh, which allows Treehouse Brewing Company to uh, brew beer on premises. And the application before this evening is to allow for pouring as part of the proposed um, uh, on premises consumption restaurant operations that are being proposed um, for the, in the uh, upcoming months. So just to kind of orient the select board, um, we've, we've previously sought approvals from the, um, the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board for phase one, which would allow for the sale of cans for off-premises consumption. And now we're seeking um, approvals from the Planning Board and the ZBA um, next week, August 2nd and August 5th, for the sales on-premises. And that will be part of a restaurant component, which I'll talk about in a, in a couple of minutes. But I just want to also let you know that we, we were before the Conservation Commission um, I believe it was last week or this week. The days are all kind of blending together, but uh, we received a negative determination of applicability there. So um, we're before you this evening on this particular application, these two applications, and we have additional hearings um, next week before the ZBM Planning Board. So um, just to kind of get into it, um, I think a lot of the select board based on um, the, the vaccinations and your experience uh, with the building in, in terms of the town of Deerfield are generally familiar with the layout of the Channing Beat building. Before you is the floor plan for the uh, winter garden building. Uh, this is the garden level of the building. And you'll see that we've designated certain areas which will be part of the on-premises consumption um, at the property. So you'll see right there in the center where, where Jen's cursor is, that's the restaurant seating area. There's additional seating areas by the stairs. Um, we have a special dining area to the west. You've got the auditorium, which will remain in, a, will remain in its um, current, current form, maybe a couple updates, but generally that, that auditorium will remain. 
Um, you'll see to the south, there's, um, been, there's gonna be some improvements made. Um, there's actually a lift that's gonna be installed to the southwest. Um, and there's a ramp to the south as well, which will allow folks to um, be able to access the property uh, more easily. So a lot of the improvements that are gonna be before the planning board next week um, pertain to enhance accessibility. So the building was built in the late seventies, early eighties. Obviously they're, they're, they had different standards back then. So Treehouse is, is putting in a lot of effort to make sure that, that this, um, this venue is accessible to all to everyone, um, regardless of, um, of their ability. So we're really excited about that and, and bringing that to Deerfield. Just to orient you further, you'll see that to the south, there's some outside seating. That's on the existing patio. Um, that brick will be removed and replaced with stamped concrete. Um, in addition, uh, the patio extends to the, to the west and you'll see um, to the far, we far west of, of this screen, um, there's um, uh, these uh, raised areas, which is part of the amp amphitheater, which um, was in existence. That was buried under dirt and Treehouse is uncovering it and restoring it to its former glory. I guess it's my understanding from the architect that that was existing and was initially proposed, but for whatever reason, Channing Beat covered up with, with dirt. So um, Treehouse is excited to uh, uh, uncover that and make that um, available to customers to enjoy outside as part of the, um, the outdoor um, experience. So that's, that's, that's kind of the, the aerial view um, of, of the um, consumption areas. You'll see to the north, there's also um, a, a, a counter area for folks to um, purchase their, uh, not purchase, but to um, place orders for, for their beer. But as you'll see, there's seats throughout the restaurant area. So folks in accordance with the zoning bylaw will be served primarily seated when they're, when they're um, ordering food. So uh, we're, we're, we're made a point to ensure that, that that equipment is in place in order to comply with the zoning bylaw. So that's, that's kind of the aerial view. Uh, Jen, if you could just go to the next slide so we can kind of have a zoomed in view of, of what the restaurant area looks like a little bit better. Yeah, so, so that gives you a little bit of a better idea of what the layout is. So again, um, there's the counter um, and there's additional seats th throughout the restaurant area. And then to the east is, is the brewery area uh, where, where brewing operations can take place. And, um, and there's also um, just to the, to the northeast, there's uh, a new uh, uh, toilet rooms that are being installed. So uh, a lot of improvements are being made to, or will be made to this um, site to facilitate this new proposed use. We're really excited to welcome you and, and the town uh, to this space. We think it's gonna be a great source of pride for the town and um, definitely uh, make Deerfield even more attractive place. So that's, so that's kind of the um, on-premises uh, pouring um, uh, layout. I just wanted to kind of speak to some particulars as well. Um, in terms of operations, um, Trias is really gonna follow its existing model in terms of ordering. It uses an application which um, reduces lines, it reduces um, people exchanging uh, funds and then pouring or, or serving beer. So it's a really streamlined process and, and uh, Trias is excited to bring that to, to Deerfield. Um, I would also like to note that um, the proposed hours of operation uh, would be from, um, I believe I've got it written down, it would be 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And then on Sundays, um, it would be 12 um, to 11. And that is because um, the town, um, I, I, I spoke with the town clerk earlier today, um, has not adopted a particular section of Massachusetts law that allows for pouring before, um, before 12 p.m. So that's something that we can talk about at a later date, but we're seeking um, again, uh, um, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday, and then 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Sundays. Um, and we can discuss you know, earlier service uh, at a later date to the extent that the, that the select board decides to enact that, that section of the statute. Um, so those are the hours of operation. Um, also like to mention, it's kind of hard to see, but in the southeast corner, you'll see that kind of dark circle. That is going to be a pizza oven. And that pizza oven will be serving up um, one of the um, options that folks can order. Uh, it's it's a, a beautiful um, pizza oven. If folks have been to the, the Charlton facility, you've probably seen it. It's, 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 it's got this beautiful um, exterior. It's almost kind of like a, a fresco, if you will. 
Um, and uh, it serves up pizzas. I think Kim can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's pretty quick. It's, it's like in a minute or something like that. So um, they'll be slinging pizzas um, as part of that restaurant use. So that's, that's really the section 19C pouring permit piece. And now kind of turning to the uh, entertainment license piece, um, uh, you'll see from the application that was submitted that we've really kind of selected all the options uh, because Treehouse is looking to use this property for a lot of different um, entertainment um, 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 options. And so uh, at this point, what's really contemplated in terms of the two uses of, for entertainment would be primarily um, live music so Treehouse has local artists come and perform, um, sometimes acoustic, sometimes with uh, amplification systems, but generally it's, it's just for folks gathered, like you would see at a coffee shop or, or anywhere else um, in, in, in different restaurant venues. Mark, yes. hold, on, hold on one second. I, so I just wanted to ask the select board if they wanted to do the alcohol license first and then the entertainment. We need, to, we need to vote on the on the first. Okay. I'll stop and then we can reconvene. I'm just gonna mute you, Mark. Sure. So, um, to answer your question, um, that is, is oh, I'm sorry, can I answer? Okay, so uh, it's a great question. Yes, so Triaz is trying to make the, um, the ordering process as easy as possible. Um, it will likely be through the application. Um, they're still working through adding that to the, the point of sale operation um, um, application. So uh, it, it, the, the exact, um, method has not been confirmed yet, but Treehouse is looking to likely add it to its app so folks can order their beers and order their food and then uh, work with their internal team to have the food brought out to uh, folks that are primarily seated in accordance with the zoning bylaw. I'm not hearing any additional audio, so I don't know. Oh, um, he just wanted to have the, um, Emily would just like to question you the, uh, because it's hard to hear, I guess. Um, so, Mark, could you just repeat that? Um, Dave's question was, it wanted to, um, to hear, it to hear. Sure. Yeah. So, so for the, for the folks at home, uh, just to recap the question, as, as I understand it, the, the, the question was, uh, aside from just um, beer, how will, um, will, will Treehouse incorporate the application in terms of the purchase of, of food? Um, and that, that is also the case. So uh, we're seeking to utilize either um, a QR code or um, a QR code folks can scan and then it will be brought to the app or if folks just know to use the app, they can use the app. Um, and the great thing about Treehouse is there's lots of really helpful people walking around. So if it's your first time, they have um, kind of wayfinding signs that help people understand how, how to purchase. Um, there's folks that are there to greet you and, and to explain the process. So um, hopefully over time, people get used to it and it will become second nature, but um, uh, definitely technology and um, staff will help um, kind of bridge that gap to make sure people are able to order their food and their beverages um, with ease, so. I unmuted the select board. Are, they're, they're asking if there's any public comment. So when I'm sharing screen, 
I can't see people's raised hands. So why don't you unshare the screen, Jen, and then we can share it afterwards. Okay, hold on. I don't see anybody's raised hands. Okay. So I'll second that motion to go there. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, close and adjourn. Hi, Chair McKinney. Hi, Dave Volker. Second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Hi, Chair McKinney. Hi, Dave Volker. Try again and just speak directly as you can. I'm sorry, board, the, the people online are just not hearing you. Um, so if you could just try to speak as close as possible. Thank you. Dave would like to move on to the entertainment license. Yes. Super. All right. So, uh, so thank you. Um, so, in terms of the entertainment license, um, as, as I was saying before, we're seeking a lot of different types of of entertainment uses to provide flexibility in terms of the use of the property. Uh, the the two primary uses in terms of entertainment would be live music which would be your traditional um, coffee shop or um, restaurant um, um, music. It might be a small, uh, small band or it might be a solo artist uh, playing for the enjoyment of, of the folks gathered at Treehouse um, on the patio or in, inside. Um, the, the, the other type of entertainment use, which is a little bit more intensive, would be the concert use. Now, um, you'll see on... As, as was provided on the liquor license application, um, the proposed occupancy, the total occupancy would be 500. So that's what we're really seeking in terms of, of this phase of the, oper of, of, of the, of the treehouse operations. Um, likely in the future, we, we might seek an expansion of that concert use, but for now uh, we're, we're seeking uh, 500 patrons and those patrons would be gathered primarily on the south grass area um, adjacent to the building. So we're, we, we've sought the licensing of, of the patio and, and the exterior portions of the outdoor portions of, of the building to ensure that folks are able to enjoy um, not just on the patio, but, but, but also in the south field. Now, uh, we, we've uh, engaged a sound engineer to um, come to the property to, to test the noise levels um, from the um, what would be an expected concert. Um, before you uh, on the screen is a concert from the Charlton facility. Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago and uh, this is a photo I took. I had the, the, the privilege of sitting in on the audience for uh, Jeff Tweedy of Wilco, a, a well-known um, uh, musician. Um, and there was 375 uh, folks gathered there. And it was, um, it was kind of a folk um, concert. It was, it was fairly mellow, but very upbeat and, and people really enjoyed the concert. So, um, what Treehouse did was, as going back to the sound engineer, they brought out a sound engineer that would provide um, testing for uh, the area adjacent to um, the patio area, a little bit south on that south lawn, where folks would gather similar to what you can see here in the photo from Charlton. And when the sound engineer uh, uh, turned on the music, they tested the noise at the, pro at the property boundaries along uh, five and 10 across the street and at the residential properties um, surrounding the, the, the property. Um, and you'll, you'll kind of see um, uh, to the, to the in, in, this, in this image, the West, you'll see that that building right there is, is the Winter Garden building. And so to the West of that is the South Lawn where the concerts would, would occur. And so um, Treehouse's sound engineer set up speakers and turned the music on and, and did testing. And so um, I spoke with the Board of Health about the, um, the noise um, uh, emanating from the concerts because that was a question raised by Dick and was also raised by um, members of, of um, uh, officials in the town 
Um, so we wanted to make sure that this was addressed and understood um, from through the lens of a sound engineer. And so um, what was suggested to us was test the ambient noise levels and then test it with the music playing. Um, and so uh, the ambient noise level along five and 10 because of the traffic was, was um, tested to be 85 decibels. And with the music playing with, and with the distance, it was measured to be approximately uh, five um, decibels above 85 decibels. So um, I, I'm probably not doing justice to the math and there's a lot more science to it. So I might be um, oversimplifying it, but um, we're, we're working with the sound engineer to, to produce documentation uh, before the, um, the ZBA hearing in order to present that to the town um, generally to understand what's being proposed with the outdoor concerts. But generally the, the, the noise levels were very minor, especially compared to other standards that are listed in the zoning ordinance related to manufacturing uses um, and, 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 and other types of zoning districts. So, and we also tested across the street at the veterinary hospital and it was significantly lower than just the five decibels um, above ambient. It was it was much it was it was lower. So, um, based on these measurements, we, we, we the sound engineer has told us that this is this is a, they were it was a positive um, testing that that Treehouse was able to provide the entertainment that it wants to provide its guests without impacting the neighbors, which I think is which is a win win. Uh, one thing I would note. Um, your your bylaws provide that when um, playing music um, as part of the sale of alcoholic beverages, um, the speakers have to be directed at the building. This is just an aerial of just the um, the surrounding neighborhood. Um, but uh, so, in terms of the the bylaw itself, um, I believe the provision is section two forty seven um, eleven excessive noise prohibited. It says all entertainment presented at licensed premises shall uh, be so conducted that no excessive noise shall be audible under any circumstances upon the street adjoining the licensed premises or any abutting, proper, abutting premises. All speakers shall face the licensed premises and not the street. In this instance, we are respectfully requesting a variance which is permitted under your bylaws related to directing speakers at the building um, um, and towards uh, five and 10 given the fact that there are no abutters um, or, or buildings or residential uses uh, um, across from five and 10, but there are um, um, uh, adjacent to the, uh, the actual license premises itself. So, so that is the entertainment license application um, and, and the proposed entertainment uses. Um, in addition to those um, expected uses, their trios will likely make use of the auditorium it will, um, it could potentially have a, a poetry night in that amphitheater. So there's a lot of great things that can be done at this space um, that will really complement the, um, the Treehouse restaurant operations. So I'm happy to answer any questions that the select board may have regarding the entertainment application. Exactly what, you know, what we were hoping for, you know, we wanted entertainment, we wanted people to come and enjoy themselves. So it'll be exciting to, you know, to come and, you know, enjoy some live music. And, um, and that just, I guess the main thing is that you're aware of is the sound and, you know, uh, making sure that we're respectful of the neighbors and trying to, you know, make sure that we're not, it's not ACDC night at like 11 o'clock on Sunday. You know, we just be respectful of the programming and stuff. And, and just, you know, we're, I'm really excited to see this. This is the whole reason we're thrilled about it. Sound not only for the, the, uh, the beverages, but for the entertainment. Uh, it's going to be a great addition to our community. I think Thank we're you. all excited very much that we're going to kind of be a destination rather than just you know, a test. So that's great. I don't have any questions. I think we're going to help you guys. Quite a few questions already. We were concerned about the noise. Um, we, we do. Uh, um, yeah, that's uh, echo what Trevor had said. We're looking forward to bringing the town back alive. Jennifer, you still can't hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just wanted to ask a question oh. from the audience. Um, so if there is a problem with noise, Lily Dwight's asking this question, if there is a problem with noise, um, you know, how would that be 
mediated or taken Certainly. care of? So um, Rios is, is regularly in contact with, with the Deerfield police. Um, we'll probably uh, work with the neighbors, let them know in advance. Uh, I don't know if there's any intern, if there's a, if there's a, a town uh, a blast or if there's a, um, a town Facebook group, but we can definitely disseminate the information through all available channels to let people know uh, when there will be concerts. The concerts won't be every night. Um, Trias would really like to utilize this venue and, and make it available um, as, as much as possible, but it's, it's, it's not going to be a constant concert venue. So we're, we're not talking, um, you know, concerts every night, um, but uh, during the summer months, certainly folks are going to want to be out there and enjoying, um, you know, a nice cold beer and, and some, some good music. So um, definitely work with the neighbors, definitely work with, with Deerfield police. Um, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but, um, and, and to the extent needed, Treehouse will um, uh, engage uh, 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 police details or, or whatever's required based on the, um, uh, the, the needs of, to ensure safety. Carolyn, can you repeat yourself? Yes. For the crowds that they are talking about, there would be a police detail for sure. So any complaints to the police would go to the shelter patrol and then go up to the police where they can be There would be response relatively to that. So Mark, from what your studies did show, if noise did become an issue, we probably wouldn't have a problem if we tried to cap it at even 95 to 100 decibels uh, for the venue? So, yeah, I, I, I don't know the specific science of the decibels, so I, I don't know if, if, it seems to me that that would be reasonable, um, but I would definitely need to speak to my client before agreeing to something along those lines. What I will say, though, is that the ZBA will be hearing this next week, and I suspect that they're going to probably put conditions uh, on our special permit. Um, so I would prefer for if there's going to be conditions um, applied um, that we have the sound engineer weigh in um, because, like I said, the, the decibel levels are 85 ambient at, at the um, at, at, at five and ten. But I don't know. To, I don't know. Maybe 100 would be reasonable, but I don't I don't want to start saying, you know, 90 versus, you know, 95. Um, I, I, I don't know if this put the particulars of, of the decibel levels, unfortunately. I'm, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to... Sorry, say that again? There's quite a different decibel level between the rock band and the string quartet, so... You know. Okay. I make a motion to approve the licensing authority as the licensing authority for your application for it. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, Mark, just before you go, I, I did um, reach out to Anna Lee um, as chair of the planning board, and we are going to try to set up the planning board meeting on the 23rd uh, on our initiative for um, the zoning. Okay. Then, Thank you very much. There is no, um, if we have to continue it or whatever, we can still post it and then we have plenty of time. So, just to be clear, because it's a little bit hard to hear, 20, August 23rd? Okay, super. If Annalie can obviously have to talk to the planning board yet, it, it's just between um, my phone call and I'll say about the deal. Trying to I just, I'm just nervous with the, the Greenfield reporter leaving it, you know, for a few two weeks before our town meeting. I mean, we don't really, we haven't scheduled our town meeting yet for October 4th, but it's tentative October 4th. So if we back through it, then we have possibilities of, you know, having that two weeks. Certainly. If, if, if I may, uh, before I leave, uh, in terms of the hours of operation, as I said, the town has not adopted Section 33B. Um, would it be possible 
for that to be explored. Obviously not tonight because it hasn't been advertised, but something to discuss with town council. Um, and in terms of our liquor license, it, we would also res respectfully request, I, I guess the hearing is closed now, but we would respectfully request that our license be conditioned that we will be allowed to commence operations on Sunday at the earliest time permitted in the town of Deerfield. So to the extent that you are able to, to the extent that the select board sees fit to reduce the hours to 10 a.m., uh, we would like the hours to be 10 a.m. Carolyn, you need to talk louder and speak into the microphone. Sorry. We need to have it on the next agenda is available, and I, but I would like it to be per entity so that we can always discuss it rather than a blanket. To Certainly. So um, I have no issue extending your license, you know, to get earlier, but um, I would like anybody else who is interested to come before us and see the actual. Uh, operation of the uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have an issue with uh, amending your license to say the earliest hour on Sunday. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. We came about that this morning a little bit. So um, I was aware of that. Uh, and then if we do adopt it, um, then you don't have to do anything else with your license. It's already there. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. 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 Okay, any other select on reports? So I just I just want to hit on uh Chase, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. Uh, so I'll just mention um so I have something to say about um um Casey and I met with uh Auditor Suzanne Bump on Friday and uh Senator Hines and uh Rep Mary Way and Rep Whip uh Mathall came, but we all met at the Shingle Reservation on top. And uh, had a had a great um, discussion and meeting. She was presenting um, a report that they had had done on pilot, which is um, not pilot for the flex, but uh, payment in lieu of taxes. When you have um, mainly focused on state-owned land in communities, um, and how how the land values in Western Mass are much lower than the land values in Eastern Mass, and so you get this you know perennial problem with the formula funding formulas about funding all kinds of state pro pro uh, programs where the property values in Western Mass are much lower than Eastern Mass. So as the formulas kind of work out, uh, Western Mass always gets short change for their state of land or any other project. They have a new um, report that they're working on that should be out, I think, by October. And, um, and that will be about Western Mass infrastructure. And that is um, uh, police stations, DPWs, our roads, our culverts, um, and then again, the funding formula between East and West. So I can't thank the auditor enough about driving focus on this issue. Um, obviously, Natalie uh, and Joe Collinsworth have been doing a great job, and, and Adam Hines, um, he now sits on the Revenue Committee in the Senate. So they're looking at ways that we can adjust these formulas to get more funding out West here uh, for, for infrastructure. So it was just an excellent meeting, great time. Um, we did, we are having um, a, a Western Mass Conference, um, the planning agencies, MMA, the Massachusetts Municipal Association, and the uh, Franklin County, Berkshire County, the four counties in Western Mass uh, select boards are all getting together on, uh, I believe October 2nd in East Hampton to have a conference and this will be one of the items that we'll be discussing and um, staff from Suzanne Bump's office will come out and address this as well. So it would be one of the topics we'll be talking about. Did 
any any light you can shed on infrastructure for electric mass is important. That's it. Yes, please do. So there's actually two bills in front of the legislature right now. Auditor Bump and Senator Hines have sponsored a bill for this. So it's not just Auditor Bump's report, it's it's then working its way through both the House and the Senate. And they're hopeful that the Joint Committee on Revenue can convene in order to this year to discuss it. So that was part of that meeting to get more information. And I included some information in the packet, but I just wanted to add that yeah. Representative Clay and Representative Whips are working hard on the House side to For assist sure. with that. Yeah. Cool. And now the uh, chair of the revenue. The we need to get the budget for the It was great. All right. It was good. Because there's probably a number of people in the town of Deerfield don't realize how much property is actually owned by the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. oh. So I bring your head. And, and even in, in Massachusetts, Western Mass alone, there are some communities where eighty percent of the town is owned by the state, and you know maybe they get a hundred thousand dollars at the most. And there's so much tax revenue that's fun to develop in the forest lands we want open space. And really, the the thrust of this whole thing is that we are uh, the climate resiliency for most of the state. We are the trees. Our trees breathe for everybody. We we have all the water. In Western Mass, um, it, it's, it is not um, consumed here, it's shipped to Boston. So there, there's just a lot of infrastructure and open land here that we support the community, uh, the state with, the Commonwealth. And so we would like the wealth of that Commonwealth to come forward to, to the West. Okay. Any other discussions, comments? Okay. Board of Health? Um, I went to uh, the CTC, which is a contact tracing collaborative uh, transition meeting. As we've mentioned in the past, uh, they are um, ceasing to exist August 15. Um, so the only, we had tried working with them, um, even though it's more expensive, we, it, they were not as good as our local contact tracing. So, um, but Eagleville School, um, did use them, and um, so we have to have a transition plan filed by August 11th with the DBH, you know, Department of Public Health, um, to anticipate that. So I'm working with Brenda White, the Heritage President, Edie Brooke, and we will try with the board to make sure that that's done. If anything else, with this pattern of event, they will be um, contact tracing themselves still. So um, they will be expected to know. Um, we're going to set up the state is no longer the prep hub uh, for their nursing, setting up vaccines. They're, they're switching to color. And so now we have to do training for the color. So um, I'll be organizing our emergency dispensing site volunteers to take the color training so that we will be ready for our flu clinics, be ready for um, under 12 um, vaccine from Pfizer, which hopefully maybe here at the end of September or beginning of October. Um, Moderna is going to be further along, but the Pfizer may be available. Um, we'll work on setting up a clinic for that. We'll work on setting up our um, flu clinics for the fall. Uh, generally, we try to get right in the gate. So we'll have your seniors and um, you know our general public to try to get in the gate this summer. So um, we're working on that. Um, just want to make sure the update on the variant, uh, which is a little bit concerning, is the Delta variant is now dominant in Massachusetts, and even though our cases are still very depressed compared to, um, you know, our Midwest and areas that were not have low vaccination rates. But what has turned up is remember your vaccine is not like a force field; it's not going to protect you that way. What happens with vaccines? It, you know, when you get vaccinated, your your body is trained to recognize the virus and attack the virus and take it out of its body. It does not allow it to, to hopefully get too much traction. 
If you have a, a immune compromised system or you have cancer drugs that you're taking or something like that, you will probably have more likelihood of, of breakthrough for um, you know, the infection. In other words, you will probably have some infection, um, you know, get sick. But you hopefully, not, you know, the hospitalizations will be very, very minimal and deaths are likely to occur good under the vaccine. So your, when you get vaccinated, your body is being trained. But what is um, really has come out in the last um, month of, of data is that the viral load of someone that's vaccinated and someone that's unvaccinated is almost the same. And with the Delta variant, what the diff, what the ha is happening, you are sicker earlier. Before, we, ne we never wanted you to take tests before five days, five or six days, because it, it took up on the average that long to get sick. Now it's down to two to four days is the average to get sick. So with the Delta variant. So you get sicker sooner, and your viral load could be up to a thousand percent more with the Delta variant. And so, even if you're vaccinated and you're walking around, you have the virus and you have the potential to spread it. So, this could, right now, we're still doing really well. And the reason why is because so many people have been vaccinated in the county and in our county. But I would suggest very, very much to everyone to please be careful. And as we, you know, close down because of weather in the fall, be thinking about your pods, all the things you did in this past year to be safe. You might want to do that again, like wear masks in public places, make sure that, you know, you have ventilation occurring and um, there is some safe distance. So keep you posted and updated as much as possible. I'm just to add to that, you know, we, we've done a great job in Deer Field and Franklin County as far as vaccinations, but we haven't we haven't done an excellent job, right? So there's still a lot of people that have not taken the vaccine. And I don't think people really understand that that if you don't if if, if the vac if this virus has the ability to mutate again from the Delta variant to something that we cannot protect, um everything gets shut down again and our economy gets destroyed and we're kids are closed from school and all the things that we are, are trying to stop really require people to take some self interest in getting a vaccination and making sure you're protecting people it's not just yourself it's this you know in a lot of the areas in this country we have florida one in five, one in five cases in the country are in florida right now and, and it's the Delta variant is pretty much everywhere. And that is the one, if it mutates again, because there are so many people rampant with this disease, with this virus that they could have gotten the vaccination for, um, it, can, it can mutate again. We can have something that none of the vaccinations that we have could work for. So you, you have to go back to the drawing books and start all over again. It's just been a nightmare. Please get vaccinated. We've done very well, but there are many people that still have it. So I can't implore you enough to get a vaccination. Talk to the people in your community, the ones that trust you. Talk to your doctor. Just get a vaccination, please. I just want to thank the um, Don Pachor, uh, our police chief, and um, the EDS uh, steering committee, um, our unified command, Mark, uh, Mike Archibald. Kevich, Jackie Choate, um, and then you know our team, Holly Stark, and um, Pat and Tim and Kochi, and you know all the people that showed up for the Hunter Action Group uh, report today. It was so many people to do that an hour. It took up more than two hours, but I think we got a lot of information out, and I, you know, I'm hoping uh, that. As a result, we will um, be able to be more effective this year. So that was really good. Um, we're working on that uh, going forward. I would like to schedule, uh, just because I don't want to forget, um, a schedule of five school committees and the full boards of health sometime um, before school starts. Um, 
And I didn't know that people with availability, I didn't know if anyone was going to take the issue or, you know, or, or, or say, oh, so I mean, that's the girl. Yeah. I think we should wait to hear from Darius because he's got to talk to the school committee too. Well, we as the board of health have to make a decision on what I'm trying to do is make it all meaning of six thirty four. So right. So we're I think you're still evolving. And I had a I had had a conversation with Darius about it via email and I think they're gonna be meeting mid to late August. I don't remember when school starts. Well we need to we need to post for the health board so we can invite the school they can do whatever they want. But we have to make decisions and we need to make sure that we have plenty of time to write to all the other boards um, and they get that. Because I think it would be very important that we are on the line at the same board. So I would like to see Dave. So if anyone else is still communicating with that, I would love to hear I want to notify the rest of the boards of health that we may have to make We don't want to see what, what the I've already talked to the evolution. Direction. No, I wasn't talking about that. I was the evolution of what the guy might be because it seems to be. Oh, no, I've talked talk to Darius. I've talked to Darius since um, multiple times on that. And it is evolving. Um, that's well, why. Well, the state make a decision, but Dave's constant to push it. Well, I know, but that's why I want to schedule a meeting. I'm just going to wait until the 13th to see what other way that happens. Okay, so maybe we can meet August 18th. Okay. Casey, if you could um, let the other town administrators um, know things to the board of health that we're here. Yeah, four town four town board of health meeting, and that we could try to invite um, all five school committees because they would like to participate with us. And the nine school committees and all the boards come together. Yes, I think it's just really important and. I, whatever is happening, you know, they, the kids go to school the next week, so we're running out of time. And, we, and that would be a strategic decision on, um, um, you know, the, for us, what the um, way to think of this might be. And we, we can always go back to our weekly board of health meeting and make, you know, we can do decisions. But, you know, we had a plan that kept the kids safe and the schools open. And I feel like, you know, that was because we worked together and um, we need to weigh the data. And that's what we want to do again. We want to keep the schools open and the kids safe. And we want to make sure there's plenty of support for the food testing that has worked out tremendously well. We want to make sure the contact tracing is um, in place because, again, our, our, our Tribute our ability to contact trace within three, three, four hours of the time was done. In four right. days, in most other communities, we're talking two or three days, but we were talking two or three hours here in the And I think that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And part of that is we can be organized. Uh, something that can, you know, the school nurses were great. Meg Burke was wonderful about organizing everybody. And the good communication between all boards of health, school committees, everybody. So we're moving ahead on the same. It's as fast as we think that we're good, and we're going to have to make a decision to do that again. And we'll try to schedule the same thing next week and do it well. So, what time do you expect to do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll do 6 p.m. on the 18th. Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'd just like to add one more thing. COVID-19. Can I ask one question? Do you want that meeting to be in person or totally online? Um, we can be, I think it, we can be in person, but everybody else is fine to be on Zoom because that's what we did before. So hybrid again? Yeah, the hybrid. Because of course, if there's people that come, come to a public meeting, they can come to the um, I think the rest of the boards would feel more comfortable being on Zoom, like we did before. Hopefully, we'll have our audio equipment. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Uh, so, just as a final note for me on COVID 19, 
lot of people looking at this as a political issue as opposed to a health issue, which is a bunch of crap, in my opinion. 75% and higher of all the politicians that are against the COVID have received the shot. And they're advocating that they don't, people don't need it. So they're very, you know, it just upsets me to no end. Uh, mainly because I've got young children, or grandchildren, that this could affect. And, you know, we've been very careful. The town of Deerfield's been very careful. Uh, and we don't need old mind people to jeopardize everybody else. And I don't care if this is coming across harsh or not, because I don't care. I don't want to be harsh about it. People should be vaccinated if they can get vaccinated. I agree. Our, our most vulnerable population right now is our under 12 year olds. We don't put them through. So we need to protect them. Um, I just have a quick update on ticked and Luca. Yeah. Um, uh, DPH. Uh, I know. I know. Uh, DPH has um, provided us with some information, uh, statewide information on our ticks. And so far, um, since last year, it's been fairly consistent here in Deerfield. Um, about a third, that's 36% of our ticks have Lyme disease. A third. What is very alarming is now we're up to about 12% of our ticks have Bibliosis, Anaboposis, Varela, and even the swan. Uh, so it's really, really important that you do tick checks. And the peak for ticks is right now until the fall, and they are out there. So, um, and because it's moist, they don't dry out. As much when we had that dry weather, the actual number of ticks were less. But now that we've had all this rain, it's like mosquitoes, they're all happy and moist and they're out there. So they're hanging out on the leaves a lot more uh, areas that were they had retreated back into the woods and into shadier areas so they did not dry out. So they're out there, it's more active, and um, so we were told to be. One of, it's one of the highest peaks right now here. It's happening um, right now. Um, the mosquito count is way out of control yeah, because yeah. of all the rain we've had. But because we've had so much rain, it's washed away a lot of the larvae. And so um, actually, there's no West Nile disease um, really from Central Mass West. And um, there's none in Deerfield. And we can and, and the Tripoli is not so much a, a risk at the moment. And the reason why is because the menorah mosquitoes, the ones that normally carry triple E, um, we normally breed early. And we had, it was very dry winter and then it was dry early. So we actually might squeak by this year with no triple E sightings in Western Mass. So um, we're pretty excited about that. Um, but please just control your yard, don't water, stay in the water, that kind of thing. Okay? Water, water, stay in the water. So that's it. Okay. Uh, minutes? Uh, uh, April 29th? Did they have a chance to review? Um, I, I was just looking. This is the joint meeting of the zone board of the field that's going on. This was the hearing. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Are you able to do that? I'll second it. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? No. Sorry. All those in favor? I certainly will. All those in favor? All right, Dave Wolfen. So, what is it? Two zero one. I would make a motion to approve the board. Yes. Uh, I will uh, second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, 
Okay, discussion items. Um, we know we talked about two amounts of payment, and the next thing is MVP uh, action plan. So, expect to receive this grant in the amount of $40,951. $40, but the MVP program has not finalized their notification. So, I respectfully request that the select board authorize me to execute the contract to facilitate a quick response from the town. Our match is $10,026, which the select board had requested to come out of contract with services during the budget process. Um, I think $5,000 Can you repeat yourself, Carolyn? Um, I think Olympic Furniture has um, uh, timely donated, um, said they would donate $10,000, I mean, $5,000, excuse me, for $10,000 um, for the historic home. Uh, I'll, I'll have to look at this for you, but I'm pretty sure. Um, I haven't seen anything, but. Either way, um, the contract documents, once they get here, need to be signed expeditiously. Okay. Um, this is kind of golden a little bit because we, um, you know, MVP is a large thing we've been doing for a long time. Um, it's an inheritance grant from the state. Um, this round that we applied for really has to do with um, no projects as far as like three boxes or culverts was kind of what we had asked for with um, curriculum help in the schools and um, helping with the um, coordination of monthly meetings with the infrastructure and finance and resiliency committee. Um, you know, looking at doing the, you know, the climate, uh, student climate project areas, the rain garden design for frontier and the rain garden uh, plant installations at Gibson Elementary. So a lot of smaller kind of Things and, and studying the healthy soils, right? That you were you were advocating for in Carroll for a long time. So I think a lot of that um, just to kind of give the town an idea. A lot of this is is more. Um, and, and I think there's another climate um, forum that was so great right before COVID. It'd be great to kind of get back to everybody get excited and get because we, that was such a great uh, forum. So um, I, I'm in favor of doing this project and actually. Get our hands around the rest of the stuff that we have still going on with the MVP stuff and close out those other plans. So, yes, um, I also want to say that uh, our healthy soils pilot demonstration project that we're working with the schools on and working on the state consultant, I think it's the um, The reason why we wanted to do that was because I am also in the subcommittee for this. In the state commission for the soil health administration. So um, just bringing in the soil health part of the climate change policy at the state level. But um, the legislature has um, voted 165 million for this fiscal 22 year to implement the healthy soils program. But we as a committee have not met yet, and the governor was you know, trying to get max DOT input on some of this stuff. And so we, it's been a little slow, but I think it's not going to impact our healthy soils pilot demonstration because um, I think we have 18 months on this to do those. Is that right? Um, no, I don't think this one's 18 months. I think this is one year. Is it one year? Okay, we need, we need to look at this because um, it's supposed to be encompass two academic years for the kids um, because this is curriculum based and they're supposed to be I mean Lawrence like Lawrence is um, the farmers uh, have volunteered to use their fields to go out the frontier kids would go out and so many so many different crops are going to come from too but they're they're supposed to be doing measurements and all kinds of stuff when how the Lawrence fields are 
you know, contributing to, you know, the good things that are happening in Massachusetts. So I, I, it's hard to explain, but anyway, we need to be make sure we're in sync with the state program um, so that that our pilot demonstration project matches what they want us to, you know, what they're what we all vote on yeah. and or recommend as a committee. So so, um, so if you look on the side of the, of the know, table, um, it's got approximate end dates. Yeah, it's it's in ten two. So um I let me let me find out what's going on. Uh, I'll try to track down and just have a state uh, commission meeting if we can. It was we're supposed to have a committee meeting, subcommittee meeting this Friday meeting on this, but I haven't heard anything. So I will but that would be political thing for some of the stuff. Oh, maybe oh, all actually yeah, the early stuff, the early meetings and stuff are, yeah. are about the, the kids will get involved. The kids will get involved, but they're supposed to be going through two academic years, which will encompass two enrollment seasons. I don't have any problem with the town wide speaking requirement for the journal forum because we already put on a forum. Right, and this would be a follow up. I got everybody excited. Uh, and that also was to put, make sure we had. A website that you know, hopefully, our website update that we voted for would include the time for the emergency police that we would not do. You know, like if you want to put it in the brain fire, what things do you do? How do you track the light? How do you do this? Do that? You know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, let me, I have to get this. So but keep I, in mind that this is a one year grant. We get a portion of that first income. Right. Yeah. Um, and it might not they may not have allowed us to do that. Yeah, this might be more cost right. you know, beyond the month of the office because right. I know the rules of these things, you know, obviously we can put in the rules and then volunteer and do teachers and do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's a very long right. time for us to get that. I, I would make a motion to. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I'm Governor McDaniels. I'm Carolyn Nash. I'm Dave Wolfer. And thank you for, for organizing this. I, this is very helpful for me to talk to people. Very quick. And you can be here. Yeah, I think we'll be here. You don't have to go blind. Thank you. Okay, the uh, next thing on the uh, our agenda is disclosures. Uh, we have one for uh, Robert Tucker, uh, Jennifer Lemonard, uh, and to the uh, check and see uh, secondary of letter to Treehouse. Okay. We filed one before. Okay. And, So what you need to do is authorize the chair to sign it as an accepted motion. We'll make a motion to authorize the chair to accept these disclosures. So the first disclosure for uh, Robert J. Becker the third. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor. I chose the name. I chose the name. I gave Walter. That is related to her work on the uh, fundraising group. She was on the steering group, um, which was with the steering committee, which she contributes amazingly well. Yeah. And um, which we're so grateful for. But she was also the chair of the fundraising committee, and she just wanted to make sure that it was clear that we had an agenda. This was the suggestion. This was the suggestion. This was the file between the three districts. And the applicant for donations. Right. 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 Okay. Yep. So we'll make a motion to approve the authorize the chair. David, can I say something? Yeah. I'm just, I muted the select board. I just want to tell everybody um, on Zoom. What they were just approving was two disclosure forms. So it's when an elected member, uh, what? 
What, Casey? Oh. Um, sorry. So when an elected um, or a board member thinks that there uh, may be a conflict uh, between you know, boards or let's say in a butter or something, they, they fill up this form and just let the select board know um, that, that there may be a potential. Can you, Casey, you, you speak on behalf of it. Hold on one second, let me unmute. Hold on. Commission to clarify any confusion about possible conflict. Say that one more time because you weren't unmuted. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is the one day with the licenses. First one from uh, Franklin Land Trust. They ride all the way up into the hill town. We used yeah. to see it now. Um, D2R2, that's the way you Several people were on vacation and I went away to Harris's away 
we all want to get together and just kind of go through it all again and make sure we understand it so we can fix it for the next time. And the water department has um, given seven abatements and brought it back to last year's level. But part of me is a little concerned because last year was COVID and there wasn't a lot of people in the building. So I just wanted to maybe take a three year average of the winter usage just and kind of get it back to somewhere. I just want to be fair to both. You know the, the sewer users, the enterprise fund, and the school. Um, so we're just going to take a little bit of time to just do that and to make sure. So by next meeting, if we can approve it um, and have a solid answer, I think Spark will work on this as well. I just want to make sure we know exactly what's going on where it sits for next time. Yeah. That'd be okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going to take me over about eighteen thousand dollars. So so we want to take the time. <laughs> I do, but not, <laughs> but fair. I want to be fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll have five and ten to pay for it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll get to the answers on that. The last one was being the master plan. Three, this was um, the water department had informed us that they were. The last meeting they did was off. It was a mistake on their part. So we were asking for an abatement of thirty-eight dollars and fifty-six cents. Um, I would have I would make a motion to approve that um, to, to correct um, that, that assessment. So it's about thirty-eight dollars and fifty cents. I um, any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? I turn in. I turn in. My day will. Okay, the next one is this is the uh, notice of the select board of town to ever source the intent of the purchase of the uh, street lights. So this is a notice, it's just an example notice, but what I wanted to do is use it as a jumping off point to advise everyone that we are progressing with the street light project. At some point, we will need to notify Eversource once we know what the cost of the street lights are. We have to notify them that we intend, that we intend to purchase. And so we're continuing with Communications with Eversource on this and communications with the company we hired to do the audit on our street lights so that we can clarify how many lights we have and coordinate that between both groups. And this is just warning you by virtue of seeing what the letter will look like mm -hmm. of the fact that this will come up and it will come up fairly quickly once we settle what the audit, the difference between the audit and Eversource's number. And this purchase is all part of the uh, we have money in the green sheet to expand to do this. Yep. So we would utilize that. Yes. Oh, it was mostly Alyssa and the energy resources group. Yep. Thank you. Explaining to me what buttons to push. Thank you. Thank you, energy team. Yes. Yep. Good job. I will say that there's a. I'm going to hold this one. Oh, okay. yep. That's the front one. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the front one. Um, I will say that um, one of my colleagues and co workers who lived in Montague has been very helpful to share information so that we understand some of the, the minutiae involved here. So, thanks to Dave for being helpful. Let's see. Oh, right. Yeah. Very helpful. So, uh, do I hear a motion? Or? We don't have to, you don't have to do it now because okay. we don't have a number yet. But yes. I did want to just bring it to your attention so that if you see it on the next agenda, it's because we've coordinated all the information to do the notice of intent that will also be a contract. Okay. And you said you put a burr underneath your saddle about the uh, connection with the. I did. So, just as an aside, 
um, the solar on land on the landfill. I hadn't heard from them oh. that for a while, so I sent them asking them if they were on mass to come and pick up. But I'm trying to study the yeah. surrounding infrastructure with them. Right. So, so that they can so that they know whether the connection is going to work. Okay. Right. So if if you have any Okay, the next is a uh, request for comments on state, you know, site plan review. It's a really, uh, special permit, phase two application. Um, I apologize again. I am on the reading for another today, so I, I didn't get into that. I, I read it quickly, so I just didn't, um, I didn't have enough time to well, be aware of it. What I'm suggesting is that um, we just Say that we do not have any, you know, nothing of concern. And right now, and then if there is, if we read this, put this home and read this, and if there is anything of concern, pass it on to Peggy yep. between now and when meeting. the meeting, uh, the planning board and the uh, planning board. Planning board meeting is uh, Monday the 2nd, and my building is uh, the 5th. Well, then if, but, yeah. I mean, I just, I just need. Yeah, yeah, so, I think so too. I just like the day. If we could, if we could by Friday give our comments specifically, then it takes it before the board to the planning board yep. and uh, the DBA. I would, so rather than not put anything down, right. I would say let us vote to say no, no comments or you know, no concerns at this time. And leave it at that at the moment here. Mm -hmm. And then if there is anything, in case we can move. So, yeah. you know, concerns, How about we have Jennifer do that? So yeah. you would, if you have comments, you could write them down in an email, send them to Jennifer, and oh, she can coordinate that. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Jennifer's yeah. waving her hand. Is that okay, Jennifer? No, yeah. no, no, that's fine. So, so it looks like we have no concerns at this time, and then if there's any, and if any one of us reads something that you might have a question on or concern, we'll send them to you. Yeah, the uh, uh, I don't, uh, I went <coughs> through it a couple times, all 72 pages of it. Yeah, over 72. Um, it's probably one of the most extensive site plan reviews I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, very inclusive. Uh, they address some of the dialogues that have been passed to town meeting. I found it very by the attorney general. Some publications you have to go by to get this all the way right. Um, so um, that's the type of entry house for the work they've been doing and getting right up front with everything coming forward. Yes. And so, what um, they did was they did follow the guidance in the new bylaw. Yeah. Um, and so they're taking it very seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. And coordinating very closely with staff, which has been very helpful for yeah. them. Yeah. So, uh, so then. And if board members have any concerns or anything, we can let Jennifer know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the next thing is appointments. There is a, um, a request. We have requested from you know if anybody is interested in uh, a variety of different spots in town government. Um, we do have. Um, we did request if anybody is interested. The personnel board had put out a request at their last meeting, which was last Monday, yep. to have somebody uh, that's interested in the vacancy come forward. And I received that right after that meeting. Yep. So she seems to be interested. Yep. Yeah. Any further discussion? I was hoping we could try to hold some of your uh, HR experience. Yeah. But uh, we have 
somebody was willing to volunteer. Yeah. We can still have some more open. Oh, this will, I think this will fill this that. This will complete the connection oh. yeah. at this time. Yep. But it's, it's great that somebody can come and go and step up and serve. Yeah. yeah. So Trevor made the motion. Yeah. You seconded, right? Yeah. yeah. All those in favor? I come in. I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Walter. Thank you. Just sent to Jennifer Cheryl after right. I had a chance to talk to Brenda and Justin. Yep. And so that's gone. Okay. There is a payment request that will go through, I think. Okay. Jennifer's been very good about getting back to us to yeah. help us with those payments. So yep. I'll look in my email and see if Justin's going to get Precision trench lists. Trench lists. They're the ones that's going to do this without taking the whole bunch of budget and sacrifice replacing it. They work, it's working well. I think they've got a site today. I think yes. one of them is on site today yes. to get, uh, get some of their equipment there and all. That's a very quick project. You know, and uh, Precision is doing the lining, right? They're doing the that's lining. Right. They're going to work on different ends. I think Ludlow is going to work from the plant for you know, south and so on. They're coordinating with your field academy staff, yep. with our staff, yep. Tom, Kevin. Yep. So we're all, we're, I think we're in good shape with that. Yep. And I will say, just so people know, and Jennifer, if you can find this, maybe we could show people. But we've put up all those DPC weekly updates on the upgrades project. Oh, great. Thank those are up on the website, thanks to Pat and Jennifer. Thank you very much for doing that. And if Jennifer can find us where it is, we can sort of point that out on the camera so folks can see it. Um, they found a place sort of right in the center of the web page of the main web page. So if you look oh, right in the center, yeah. South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant awesome. Facility. So just in case people wanted to know, I've been providing that information to the select board as I receive it. Yep. Um, and trying to remember to provide it to some of the other committee members that might be interested, but yep. I thought it would be a, take a minute or so just to show people it is on the website. That's and great. if they have questions or if they want to get a copy of it, we can certainly give it to yep. them. Well, Thank well, you, Jennifer. They should be able to see what they're paying for. Yeah. to defer the major storm threshold notes for the 2020 storm to sleep rash. So they've got a hearing schedule. And that information is in the web, is in the packet, which is uploaded to the website on the scheduled date for the select board hearing, just in case anybody wonders. Most of the time we put the packet up so people can follow along if they'd like. Did you uh, ask for a question about the to see if we should be sending a letter um, regarding it. Then Kevin, and then 
That's the funniest thing. What other communities are what are they doing about it? Okay. I can put that out on screen. And then if if other communities are I think we're good. I don't mean to speak of this, but I, I think we have to get a name and find out the name. If other communities are sending letters, could we authorize Steve to put together a comment? He thought this was the part for um, text stores. Now it's things like all the other stores to force them to maintain the monitoring and do all that kind of stuff. And then the two public hearings themselves said that, you know, they're not. So this whole storm threshold. Is part of what I've testified to here before, but I I don't know what the what the request will have to bear. But you very much for that. Can you just come back? Yep. I have a just because it's very confusing. We know this is very confusing. Oh, it's it's not clear at all. Oh, okay. I thought it was just me. No, 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 it's not you. I read it three times and I still don't care. Okay. The DPU is very difficult to read. Well, no. I don't want you to send a letter that is detrimental to what we're doing. Right. To do. I, I, I want to make sure that we have input onto this 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 whole storm recovery fund because well, they fought have, really hard to get that. I mean, I think they have the, the recovery fund is what 1.2 uh, million per storm. Right. Is that yeah. right? So, right. and then they got hit with 10 storms for an estimated total of 66.3 million, million in total storm response, uh, storm response costs, um, inclusive of the 12 million storm threshold increase. So, so they're asking for deferral of 7.2 million. Right. Which but is associated with six. Did they get any money back from other sources? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good that's, question. Yeah. Uh, that's why I want you to ask because you do not want to support the referral if they have other sources to come to your email list to say, hey, I said all this. Right, because that's the problem. Yeah. Because what they're supposed to And I think, yeah, they are. And that's what I think the issue is that the, the storms were so much bigger than they had put aside. Yes, but guess what? It keeps coming. Okay, so, so the, the, the to, set aside should be larger. Yeah. So, was that a motion? <laughs> motion to, to ask me to develop a comment letter. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Survey your standards. Yeah. Survey my standards. Okay. And make sure. They were asking the right questions. Make sure we're doing the right thing. And then put together a letter that we would sign. Well, it's even more hard to do. Because I think that we I think we have to get this thing before I don't see the data or not, but I, at this point I have there was a date to be finished. You know, like in a week. It's really not very clear on this. 
my nose is just stuck. So. I just not, I don't see how it's not, it's just a water. But again, thank you for thank you for all the I'll second that motion. Thank you. Okay. My only comment is that yeah, the case is probably will some post-election letters to the National Weather Service to get that you know <laughs> date reading on there. The flood flood notices when she was here the first you know before. It so works. It works. Any further discussion? Others in favor? I hear all of them. Uh, Dr. Jamie, I hear all of them. The next thing is the uh, So this is, this is the Suzanne Bonner stuff that we talked about. Um, Abby, Abby Durland from her conference is one of the folks that was up there with us on Friday at the meeting. She sent a brief, she sent a packet over. I did an extract from that packet just to give you some idea of what the Walsh, what Walsh report is going to look like. It's not finalized, but yeah. it just gives you a, a flavor for what they were addressing in terms of policy questions. Um, and then, I'd like to ask that you send a letter of support from the Corporal to um, Ann Harney and uh, the Commissioner and Larry Clay and Representative Grant that we support what they're doing. I appreciate that a lot. Please send a reference that way. Uh, a letter sent to us just kind of talking about some three issues that she had. Uh, one was the railroad crossing in Wilmington, the Dudley. Um, so to have some street control uh, mm -hmm. on it. Um, again, it's not something that we had any control over. Are you talking about the interception one or the one? Yeah, by leaders. Yeah. yeah. We had no control over that. Just Carolyn and I sat in the meeting and tried to get them to help us and they couldn't do it. Uh, the other is the old Cumberland Farms property. I suggest getting all the farms in the whole school there. Um, the old Cumberland Farms property was We think it may be sold or, or is it process being sold? That's what was a bit more weird. You know, that's still set in. Yeah, that's right. Which means they'll have to go through the 21E process of testing the soil, et cetera. Yeah. So if that's in process, then they probably are thinking about putting it on the market or making a plan. The, the last item was about uh, property uh, that was weight on the corner of, you know, across the 116 of the We for yeah, the developers that area for sure. There may be something in play over in Residential group, mental health group. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Right. So this is really a first read of the yeah. of the information that we received. Gives you a flavor of what they what their questions have been. Mm -hmm. what they're looking at. Uh, you know, Emily Dahl. Uh, Emily was an institute organized on um, you know further meetings with yep. uh, the sort of like ad hoc. So this is the first time you guys had a chance yes. to see yep. it. I only received it on Monday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would give you an opportunity to read it and have you know put your questions yes. prepared for the 11th. And I did send Anna Lee a note and tell her that. Okay. Appreciate the reference to present the plan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or if you have any questions, be sure. 
So I have a few things. Um, Kevin and I have had a conversation and as you know, we had a resignation and we started to get the finance department mm -hmm. and we haven't been able to find a new person. We're revamping the vacancy notice to try to make some allowances and for some of the things that maybe provide what it reads out. But what we're wondering, the two op the chief operator and certified oper operator are working in significant number of rooms. So Kevin and I had a conversation and we'd like the board to consider adding a stipend to their pay because it's not just about what they're making, it's the time that they're spending. They're working continuously. And so we have the funding in the sewer account because we're not paying for the first right. So Kevin and I suggest a three hundred dollar stipend per pay period to cover that while we try to recruit. And we're going to expand our recruiting efforts. Keith Milne sent an email um, to me. I guess he had the wrong email address for me because I hadn't received some of his emails. But in his the, the latest email I received, um, he had a couple suggestions for sharing information in the vacancy notice in different areas. So we're going to implement that. And Jennifer's been working with Kevin to revamp the notice. So I'd like the board to consider that because I do think we're in a situation where those two folks really need, this is unanticipated lengths of time that they're working. Um, so I would like to suggest that the board approve that as the sewer commissioners. It's very complex work. Asked for some help from Jeff Kravitz as well because he and I had an offline conversation about this. So I'm going to check my email. I think he sent me some information about possibly a service that might get him. At this point, we're just the guys are struggling. Yeah. I think we should recognize that. Mm -hmm. um, and Kevin agrees with me. So we have some of the funding to do that. It helps, it helps them because they have such long periods of time to get the work. I do want to say for the record, I really appreciate appreciate Tom stepping up to the plate yeah. and um, playing the extra hours because it's it truly is an extra hour. I mean, it's just contrary to seven days a week. It's seven days a week. It's a lot of lab work, and it's it's even at a minimum time they're working all day. And they're well, with these intense storms, we yeah. have, you know, they have to constantly monitor the plant right. because the infiltration of, you know, some, you know, substance that works in the So, um, it is, it is, I mean, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 
No, three hundred seven. Right. We that's we he and I right a week. Right. One hundred fifty a week, but three hundred for the year. So six hundred a month. It's right now. I think it's as it's as equitable as we can get while we revamp the vacancy. So it would be three hundred dollars per pay period. We have until we can hire someone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the lights. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to everybody listening to me talk about where the lights are. Um, yeah, just one second. I'm going to write Carolyn, did you second that? Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, you okay? So I that's why I was confused. Okay, and then I received a request from Candace on behalf of Candace Bradbury Harley, our director at the library, to facilitate a conversation with the Tilton Library trustees. I've actually got a request for two different things, so I'll just lay the first one out here and then we'll move on. Um, so the, the first one is actually this ownership question, and I had gone back and reviewed some information, but the library trustees would like to revisit that. I think we had these conversations before I started. We had an opinion from Yeah, so we have an opinion from town council. I think the library trustees would like to talk about that. But the, la the most recent email I received was Candace asking if the select board would be amenable to having a discussion with the library trustees about the library project. And so my comment to Candace was after going through the budget process and listening to everybody talk about this, so not just the select board, but the finance committee and the capital improvement planning committee, I suggested to her that we actually have a much bigger meeting that includes representatives for those, those committees themselves in addition to the building advisory committee, because we have a lot of prospective building projects on the horizon here. And I recall in our, our priority meeting, this came up. And one of the questions that came up from a member of the finance committee was, how do we fit all these projects, including our, our wastewater treatment plant upgrade projects into what's allowed under our debt ceiling? So I didn't go into a huge amount of detail with Candace about that when I responded to her, but I suggested that we do it that way. Because I think from a productivity perspective, since each one of those committees, and tangentially, I, I think with the building advisory committee, but the reason I wanted them included was they've been doing a lot of other work on evaluating the building. Each building plays a part in what services are in town. So those are the groups that really have the, the biggest stake in how we handle the building. So I suggested to Candace that we have a bigger meeting about that. And so I would like the board to know that I did that and I would, I would like to try to facilitate that with her and the other groups. Because I think they have, having listened at many of your meetings with planning or with capital and finance, I've watched you all troubleshoot very effectively, and I think it would be a more effective conversation. I, I am comfortable with that. I think we haven't had a tenant in our entire right. This so is the most debt I've ever seen so, Deerfield incur. So, you know, maybe Tom can talk to us about it. I mean, I, I feel like I'm not more whether we do is it we or not. I feel like we need to have more information. So I want more information yes. before I make any more decisions. And so I think one, one piece of that is everybody hearing the same information from the library trustees and, sure. and participating in the same conversation. Yeah. That's that. From, a, from an administrative perspective, it's really hard to pull no, five groups together like that. On the other hand, it I think it would be a more effective more conversation. Yeah. You'll get more work done. I watched you guys do it in your joint budget meetings yeah. this year. Yeah. 
So that was my suggestion. Yeah. And, you know, I realize the importance of the library for the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody discounts but, that. I also realize that their grant is a $4 million grant, and that would help the library a lot. Right now, they're kind of spitballing around four million. So if we're going to spend eight million dollars, we better have a single center as well. So I think view. one thing that uh, one of my colleagues suggested to me, to me today at the close of business was seeing if there's more updated information on what the cost might look like. Because after a conversation with the building advisory committee member, construction costs are up thirty to sixty percent right now. And we can expect that to move to be a limiting factor in whatever we do in the next at least year, probably two or more. Because I think this shift with the pandemic is going to take a while to settle itself out. I may be wrong. Somebody can call and correct me. That's fine. Yeah. But I, I think we need to take that into account because for a plan, from a planning perspective, if we were to get the grant next year, then what does that look like in terms of debt? Because we've got a phase two upgrades to move forward with. Well, I think that the uh, escalation cost for the list of those plans that was just not, nobody could. Nobody predicted this. The pricing that's out there right now. Maybe it will die down by the time it happens, but some home will be like $500 a square foot or to build a house. That's why I didn't build a house. Yeah, it's a lot. Right? So we all have it comfortably, but yeah, you couldn't afford to build a house what we intended to do when it first started. Yeah, because, you know, just a simple 2,000 square foot house, it's a million dollars. I can't see people looking at the land and saying, that'd be a little bit too much. Right. <laughs> Wait till I get all that. <laughs> well, it's true that in my, my industry is on fire. You can't get any contractors to do anything. They're so busy. They're booking it for next year. Yeah. Two years out, it's hard to get materials. Normally, I get a, a list of the projects in you know, four, five weeks, six weeks, 12, and 14, and some products 19 weeks. I can't show it in like six months. It's all new people. Yeah. yeah. Every, and it's like that with, with, with clients, with anything that you're going to buy. You yeah. know, you just can't get materials because you can't, there's no, nobody's working. Big uh, price chopper had a job fair yesterday for the, their whole price chopper, and um, they have two thousand openings in their whole all the stores. They had one applicant, a teenager, apply for a job at the job fair with the two thousand openings. They had one applicant. So, and that's you know, you just multiply that out. Well, all the industries right now, right? And the yeah. trades, definitely. All the, trades. the trades are struggling. One of the things that I was told was in the trades, the impact of of graduates going into the trades because of the pandemic slowed down training opportunities mm -hmm. yeah. for say folks going through Smith Cove. They're behind in some of their trainees coming into the market. And they were behind before this. There's nobody coming up through the trades. I talked to uh, union reps from the Carpenter Union in Springfield. This is four years ago. If there's nobody coming up through the trades to do this work, and they're actually, I know that's true. My husband is part of Central Office Agency. Yeah. My friend Jimmy runs an electrical thing, an electrical company. He's an electrician. He he's down two people, and yeah. really could. He's very busy. Could yeah. use the help. Oh, absolutely. So you know, and that's doing. just one example. Well, I, I think part of it is all the female teachers who have trades. My husband has been trying to get female who are on the verge of that opportunity to retire who have retired just yes. because they were you know they could they can do that yeah. um, and that's what we for training all these people that normally might have gone for some other reason and there was a bubble anyways with um you know big retired you just didn't yeah. have that that group of people coming up behind they just want the numbers at first earlier on to take take those jobs and so this is going to be a long haul. We've got to do something with our immigration laws to be able to three days. So one.
one other thing about the library project is I think we have two separate conversations. I don't think we can do this in one session. Right. So I think it sounded to me like Candace was more inclined to want to do the project, the building project first, but I'll clear it. Okay. Oh, it's, it's good to have this conversation to find out how we can help and how we can go. And anecdotally, a couple of members of the it is, I believe. Yeah. Oh, all, all of these proper sort of converge in that. So, as Kevin and I had that conversation about when, when we're thinking the extrapolation in our brains of, of how these projects move forward, Kevin's comment to me was, Where are you going to put people when they need to park? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Right. We, we, need, we need to have some, we need to have some visioning, I think. Yeah. But but pulling all these projects together into some sort of an order is also important. So I think these conversations can be useful. We haven't had the time to meet Jeff from Bird Square. Jeff I was just going to say, I know uh, the Senate Housing Group is really trying to do really trying to get going on the Jeff. Yeah. So that we can have some questions for you. We had invited down here to come talk about. Somehow they were coming to our town and uh, common space meeting last week, but there was an, an illness. We just didn't have a call. So the next meeting, we'd love to have their input, love to group together, and I'd love to have their help and just kind of play so, out so, of uh, it. Sure. Yeah. So, 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 in case you contact Jeff. Oh, yes, we have. Back. We've just been. Right. Oh, I have contacted him. We haven't circled back around because okay. it was so, right at the so end of this meeting. Like, it's in the mix. So, and the other thing that I was hoping to make is that if we could get the we, we need to sort out you know, the five and ten was flooded again. It was just a small rainstorm. I mean, it was starting to rain right before we got there, and it was flooded again. Yeah. And they had just cleaned it out, and it wasn't manageable. Right. Right. We need to get this discussed. So, I mean, we have a meeting on Monday. On Monday. We have a meeting on Monday. 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 I don't know. I don't know. But I do know Kevin and I had a conversation about this. So, so I can have that meeting at 11 a.m. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we're meeting there. Yeah. And Chris from the reporter had asked me about it. So, if you yeah, see a quote so from me, I I'm scared. I'm not sure. Uh, I know that there's a meeting, but I don't know exactly. So he, we have we'll, we'll be meeting with a bunch of state officials, not just CFC. Yeah. And Kevin and I had a conversation because we've got we've got some things in play that we need to iron out, some estimates and stuff. And yeah. Kevin's working on that. Okay. And so he brought me up to speed about that and and sort of the schedule of things. Um, yeah. So once we have that meeting, I think we'll be in better shape. Okay. Chris just I waved at you guys. What's that? Who did? Chris. Oh, hey, hi, Chris. <laughs> How are you? Doing well. I'll be in. I'll be moving to Greenfield Sunday, so I'll be in person from now on. Oh, wonderful! How oh, badly great. did you quote me, Chris? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, He's good. Yes, thank you. I'm afraid of the press, but I told him that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for writing the back to us. Yes, exactly. Um, um, so, okay. Then for that meeting on Monday, we're going to talk about the budget for the next year. But while we're there, we need set up another meeting. We need to talk about yes. what's happened right. in the three years since our last meeting. We need to, you know, we did everything we asked them. We pulled the transit bond bill. It's supposed to be in there. It's supposed to be the same design. Where is the budget for the next year? Let's, let's have let's see if we can get another meeting together now that we right. you know, do you know who you're supposed to I could find it out. I'm sure I got it in there somewhere, but the free design space is all the upgrades in Ontario, which includes the sidewalk, but also all the people. We want to make sure that we we're talking about the people, but we want to Yeah. On what it takes and how it takes to make sure that 
So they haven't notified it. Normally they would notify us right. at a certain percentage point in their design phase. They usually notify us. So we'll follow. I know they've got Parkville, you know, Bedford, different people, people like that. And so many of our public safety people, which is what happens a year. So that is another item that we need to follow up on to be able to do it. Yeah, there's a couple things. So the Oxford property update right now, Andrea Woods is on vacation. There was some more information she had asked me about. So she and I were communicating about that. I'm going to get her that stuff. So she has time to pick this up when she gets back, which will be next week. So the website transition, I am investigating some of the procurement allowances we might be able to utilize through state contracts and government contracts. Um, it's a bit of a, a dig because some contracts can only be used with one time with payments and other contracts can be spread. We initially wanted to spread this out over five years. So I'm working not only with the Civic Plus on that, but with SHI as a reseller contractor on the state contract. So there's, it's a little more complicated than I was hoping it would be. Um, but I did want to let you all know that that's still in play. Um, the electricity I let you know about. I had a meeting, so personnel board, I mentioned it earlier, personnel board had a meeting last Monday, the 19th. And they would like to pursue a coordinated discussion with the select board about more than just individual policy. So really, you all had asked them about certain kind of policy. I had mentioned a, an appointment policy. And so we, we got into that conversation and they asked me to try to set up a meeting. So I had sent an email to David and an email to the They would like to set up a meeting in September, just those subjects for the two committees to meet. And because they're on, they, a lot of people are on vacation this month. Yeah. So they won't be back and able to talk to the board about this right away. But they wanted me to put the 
healer out there. So I would like to do it on an off week. So maybe the first week of the first Wednesday in September. Would you guys be willing to do that? Oh, I thought for the first Monday. Monday of September. No, that's we can't do that. That's not good. But no, I think <coughs> don't we have a meeting before you can We can try it. You want me to put up there the 13th? Okay. I'll put the 13th up there as a consideration. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would. They usually meet at six o'clock as well, so it would be the same time. I did warn them that the only availability we had for one member was on a Wednesday, so I tried to get them to. Well, you know, you guys could meet us. They have, they may have something else to do. Um, but they usually are done by eight, eight thirty at the latest. They like to have like a two and a half hour meeting. Um, and you should also know that they are planning to start meeting more frequently to work on the, pers the personnel manual. They, they really. I, I've, I've said this before, and I know my predecessor said this before. Moving, I remember when we talked about it when I was here before, is really moving to a personnel manual so we can keep our policies robust, robust enough to make it. Um, you know, uh, what's been really helpful is we do the team housing meeting and we work on bigger blocks for the community. So Lily and I had that conversation at the personnel board meeting, and I've discovered that that's considered deliberation. No, it's a post meeting. You have to. Well, the thing is, is if it's a post meeting, that's fine. You can't be collaborating no, outside no, of the meeting. In, in that's in the, the that's one of the reasons that Lily and I have it. In, in the meeting, we are going over the right, and they would be able to do the same thing. But that actually came up because um, they initially were going to. Right. But it's easier than doing any other way. Like if you're going to a manual, right? And you that's what they plan to do. Right. So you put it from there to the Google Doc, and you put and you work on it in the meeting, in a post meeting. It's very, very easy. Very productive. And they can do that. Yeah. yeah. They can do that. All right. So what did we say? The 14th or the 15th? She hey, the pandemic has forced skill sets we weren't aware we even needed, right? How do we grow? All right, so. <laughs> so